Okay, I think I'm ready. Hello everyone, my name is Borax, and I've been on a mission to play and rate every single champion in the support role. Today we'll be looking at Nidalee, and the reasons I think she could work include bonus movement speed and brushes, long range poke on her Q, extra vision control with her traps, a heal that grants attack speed, and then she has her cougar form, which gives her access to a leap that can be used to gap close, allowing you to use your Q, which grants percent missing health damage as an execute to finish off kills. Is this enough to make her viable? Well, let's find out together, as I rate Nidalee, the bestial huntress on her ability to be played in the support role. They will fear the wild. The biggest downside to Nidalee as a champion is her lack of any form of CC. She doesn't even have a slow. Therefore, she wouldn't be any good at invading, right? Well, yes, technically you are right, but what I like to do level 1 as Nidalee support is look for opportunities to hit full range spears on opponents who are lollygagging, as you will do a decent amount of damage to them. For the invading category, I will give her an A- rating. You won't be getting kills most likely, and you are bad at helping defend against an invade, but getting the opportunity to get an early HP lead for your team is quite nice. Now let's talk about laning, where I like to judge a champion based on three categories, poking, peeling, and all inning. The whole reason why you want to be playing Nidalee as a support is because of your ability to poke with her spears. Each spear does about one fourth of their health bar, so if you hit one after another, the opponents begin to sweat. In fact, with enough poke, you will have the confidence to go into cougar form to finish them off. And sure, you might not get the kill, but at least you get them to flash after you for some reason, and then you can finish them off by throwing a spear at their feet, which of course will kill them. For poking, I will give Nidalee a S-. -minus. There aren't too many poke champions in the support role, and Nidalee will be one of the better ones if you can hit those spears. She also has a decent auto attack range, and with Aerie you can look to mix them in as well. But man, it's actually really hard to hit spears in lane, as they have a rather small hitbox, and don't move super fast. They also don't do the most damage if you're close to your opponent, so you want to be hitting max range spears, but the further you move back, the harder it is to hit them of course. It's all really a little minigame, which is pretty fun, but hard, as unlike other meta poke supports, the minions block your poke easily, so you always need to be looking for the right angles. If you thought I was being too harsh about Nidalee's ability to poke, then you might want to look away, as it's time to talk about her ability to peel, which is almost non-existent. No CC means that you can't stop the enemies from moving towards you to engage or from dealing damage against you. The only way you can peel is by maintaining proper spacing and utilizing your range advantage because if they are ever able to close that gap, you are going to be in for a rough time. So, in lane you really need to make sure that you maintain the health lead, which should reduce the enemy's willingness to engage. You can also set up your W traps to grant you maximum vision, so you can see ganks way ahead of time. For peeling, I will grant Nidalee a D+. And yes, it's because of that little dinky heal. Don't worry, I didn't forget it. In some very, very rare cases, that heal will actually be able to help you turn a fight in your favor with its attack speed and small HP that it grants, but I have no examples of that occurring, so we will both have to assume that it could possibly, maybe, be true. While Nidalee's peeling is abysmal, her all-inning was way better than I expected. Every time I play Nidalee, which I will admit is rarely, I'm always shocked at how much damage Cougar Form does to low health targets. If you can hit your Q or W first on an opponent, then they will be marked with their Hunter effect and in Cougar Form your W gets enhanced range towards them and your Q does 40% increased damage, which is definitely noticeable. If you run Dark Harvest as I did occasionally, then any low health hunted target that isn't a tank is guaranteed dead with Cougar Form's Q execute. For all inning, I will give Nidalee a B rating. It's amazing against low health targets, but the problem is if they aren't low, you will just jump in and get blown up instead, which sucks. You also have no way of setting up your jungler for a play, as you again have no CC. Which is why I can't give her anything higher than the B rating. Now that we've talked about Nidalee's laning prowess, let's talk about the matchups that she might have to face. If you follow this channel, then you know that I disdain Morgana, and would say that she is the League of Legends equivalent of missing the bus when you are late for class. Morgana is indeed a tricky opponent, as her spell shield blocks a lot of your magic damage when you are trying to execute someone. And while you can dodge binding rather easily, if she binds your ADC, they are just done so, and there's nothing really preventing her from walking up and ulting your lane at any point. Truthfully, there are a lot of champions that counter Nidalee. She doesn't do enough damage to actually bother heavy engaged tanks too much, and if they want, they can kill either you or your ADC if they land any of their abilities, as you are super duper squishy in general. Some matchups that are a little better are Alistar and Braum, as they are super tanky, but at least their engage ranges are shorter. 
Karma, Lux, Brand, and Zyra are all tricky as they have poke in CC which is better in general than your chust poke. Nidalee is one of those champions that is super skill expressive. The better you are at the champion, the better she will seem. If you can hit spears consistently, you can actually have a chance to win a lot of lanes as you have more range than others and do a decent amount of damage. But, if you lose the poke battle or the enemies are ever able to hit you with any sort of CC, it's really not going to be a good time. Some lanes I think Nidalee can actually do rather well into are supports that are looking to scale into the late game and have rather weak laning phases. Nidalee is an early game champion who can actually look to punish these champions. As you can tell from the footage, most of my Nidalee support games came from me playing against Renata, and also this one random Gwen support. Even though I am terrible at Nidalee, your range advantage and damage output does enable you to be quite the nuisance in the Renata lane. One matchup I think you will crush is any Nidalee mirror matchup, as you will have all of the great knowledge from this video, and hopefully they are trolling. Finally, we have a bunch of champions in the who plays these guys even tier, so I haven't seen them in so long, but truthfully, I think most of them would absolutely crush Nidalee. Now let's talk about ADCs that you want to pair Nidalee with, and there are some good combos. I believe that running a double poke bot lane will be your best bet at winning lane and having a chance later in the game. Varus and Ezreal are the first two champions that come to mind who fit this bill, and Ezreal has the added benefit of being able to peel a bit for himself, as like Nidalee, he has a dash. An interesting combo for the late game is an AP Kai'Sa, she does pack quite the punch with her Ws, and if you can combine that with your spears, enemies really have to beware. But the rest of your team is going to have to be rather AD centric, or else MR will mess you up too much. In the hypothetical case that your ADC is a useless bonobo, then you might want to consider roaming from time to time, so let's talk about that. I really like roaming, and while Nidalee is usually played in the jungle, it's usually with champions that have some sort of guaranteed CC like Renekton, and that's because her ganks are really hard to pull off due to her lack of CC. Nidalee's support is no different. Well, outside of the fact that you actually will be doing even less damage than normal, which isn't ideal. It is nice to have the movement speed through brushes, a jump to get over walls, and extra wards with her trap, but for roaming, I will only slot Nidalee at a C-. If you can hit that spear, sure you can blow someone up, but there will be plenty of times where you just end up being the one who gets that treatment. Let's give Nidalee a rating for her ability to support in the early game, which will slot at a C+. Yes, her damage is potentially fantastic, and you can try to snowball the game with early kills, but unless you are insane at Nidalee, the chances of that happening are actually quite low. I think that not having CC is such a detriment in the support role, because that means if you aren't ahead, you will provide almost nothing to your team, which isn't great, but let's look into that more as we talk about the... Mmm, the taste of coward. In the late game, responsibilities of a support I like to rate include their ability to get picks and to teamfight. Getting picks as Nidalee support isn't that bad, especially if you were able to get a lead in lane. If you hit a spear, you can switch to cougar form and burst down an enemy super quickly, catching them off guard. Sometimes you don't even need to switch into cougar form though, and just a spear will be enough to secure a kill. For getting picks, I will give Nidalee support a C rating. Sure, it's great if you are ahead and hit that spear, but if you're not fed already, it might look a little something more like this, as if you don't provide damage, you won't really be providing anything to getting that pick off. Now let's talk about team fighting, where support's responsibilities include engaging, peeling, and sometimes dealing damage. I don't think I've given a F- rating in a while, but that's exactly what Nidalee's support deserves for her ability to engage. You do damage and have a heal, and that's that. If you think starting off the fight by jumping into everyone is the right move, then I think Fortnite might be a better game for you, as there isn't as much strategy there. Peeling isn't much better as Nidalee, as the only tool you have is that little heal, but at least it's something, so I'll give her a D- rating. The other thing you can do to try and peel for your team is to burst them down in cougar form before they pick off your carry, which might work and is sadly the only play you can really do outside of just abandoning them. Finally, it's time to talk about Nidalee's ability to deal damage as a support, and she deserves a S here, and no, I'm not joking. In several of the games I played, I actually ended up doing the most damage on my team, and that's because if you can keep hitting spears, you will do a lot of damage. You do also still have the opportunity to switch into cougar form to jump in and finish off a kill, but if you don't get it, you will just die. You also do no damage to people who are building MR or health, which does prevent me from putting her up to a S+. Before we look at Nidalee's overall ability to support, let's take a look at the runes and items that I would recommend. If you think you can get a lot of autos off in lane, I would recommend summon Airy to enhance that. For the rest of the tree, I like to take Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch. For secondary runes, Biscuits help with your sustain, and Time Warp Tonic can be really clutch in those close scraps. 
The other rune that I think is an interesting option is Dark Harvest, as it helps with your burst on low health targets, and it felt like a lot of fun to use. I then took Sudden Impact as it works with your pounce, and I think Ghost Poro is nice as you will be placing a lot of wards down, and finally Ingenious Hunter helps you lower your items cooldown and trinkets. Now let's talk about items. For your gold income item, you should take Spell Thief's Edge as you want to be poking as much as possible. Then you want to go for your boots, and I think Sork Shoes are the best option in order to maximize the amount of damage you do to squishy opponents, which will be very important. Then I would work on a Mythic, and while it is expensive, Luden's Echo was my favorite option to further increase the amount of pen I had, and it works well with your trap for free procs. I could also maybe see Night Harvester working here, but I think that item in general is kind of eh, and I'm not a huge fan of it. Then you want to build more AP to enhance your poke, and honestly you probably just want to buy whatever AP items people are deeming to be the most broken at the time. But one that I found to be fairly decent on Italy was Horizon Focus, as it will work on your long range spear and increase your damage when you switch to Cougar form. You could also think about going for a Medjice if you believe you can be relatively safe and maintain your high amount of stacks. Now that we've talked about the runes and items, let's give Nidalee an overall rating for her ability to support, which will slot at a C-. She does deal a lot of damage, but that's her only saving grace, and most of the time you want to do a little more in the support role. Would I recommend you play Nidalee's support? Well, actually yes. If you are good at Nidalee and can land those spears against opponents, I bet you can carry the game and it will be a lot of fun, but definitely do not recommend it if you're trying to climb in ranked, as it is just a for fun pick. When should you pick it? The best comps for a Nidalee support will be against teams that don't have too much engage and your team wants to have some poke damage. But something like a Vel'Koz, Lux, Brand, or Xerath all do the same thing but are easier and have some form of CC as well. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would leave it a like, that would be amazing. And if you'd consider subscribing, that would make my day. Again, thanks for watching, and I want to wish you good luck and have fun if you are playing Nidalee support. You will probably need it.